Hello, my crafty people. Happy New Year. Welcome to the Mama Elephant January release. Today we will have some fun monkeying around with everyday monkeys and take a look at a new die that has a new twist on the circle scallop. Remember to leave a comment on these release videos for a chance to enter a drawing to win a prize from Mama Elephant. The release will be available on January 15th. First up, we'll take a look at Everyday Monkeys, and I have to say, I really enjoy the sizing on these images. They're really cute. They will pair up with a lot of your Mama Elephant stamp sets that have monkeys, like the um, Little Monkey Agenda, also the different food theme sets that have the little monkeys on them. My favorite image is the last image, where the monkey is using the banana as a telephone. I love it. Here is a look at the coordinating dies for everyday monkeys. You can cut out some of the smaller stamps like the little heart and the banana. Here is a look at combo circle creative cuts and it's a really neat way to have different inverting colors on your scallop. So I'll show you how that all works in a bit. Today I'll be using my Arteza Real brush markers to color in these images. These are sort of like watercolor markers. And you know, I normally use the Bristol Smooth cardstock with these types of markers, but for some reason it was not working out for me. So I decided to use just some regular watercolor paper along with these markers today. The other equivalent to these markers are the Zig Real Clean Color brush markers, if you have those. I'm just using just some regular, typical um, kind of colors for these images today, and I'll have the uh, marker colors in the description box, but I'm just using some simple colors with these types of markers. I don't really do three color blending as you would with Copic markers. I kind of just use one color and blend it out um, because you can control the amount of pigment with like the amount of water that you use. So with watercolor paper, I figured out <laughs> that the best way is to wet the paper first and then lay down your color and then kind of drag out that color where you want it to land. So currently I'm in the process of um, packing up my craft room. We're going to go into a new space. So I kind of looked at all my supplies and I haven't really touched my watercolor markers in a long, long time. And I thought, okay, I need to use them. I need to mix it up. So I decided to use it and I forgot how fun these were. It's a lot less stressful than using Copic markers, but if you haven't had practice with them for a long time, they're sort of like this learning curve that you have to like learn again. But after you get the hang of it, it's, it's it's just fine. This uh, footage is sped up a lot, but there, there was a little bit of a learning curve because I kept forgetting to wet the paper first with water. And that is key when you're using a watercolor paper. With the Bristol Smooth cardstock, sometimes I don't have to wet the paper first. I can just go in with a marker and it works best with lighter colors. Those are kind of easier to drag out. Um, it's a lot harder for me to uh, use the darker colors because you have to really understand, you know, how much water that you need. And, um, and I always kept forgetting to wet my paper first. So some of this was a little rough, <laughs> but then I finally got the hang of it. It's such an eye opener when you're forced to look at your supplies and pack them up and see what you need to purge and you know what you want to keep and what didn't work out for you. And I have so many different coloring mediums because we all go through phases of like, oh my gosh, that looks so cool. And then you never like some of the stuff I haven't even touched. So it's kind of like interesting to see what I like to use most. And usually typically I go for the things that like are easier to use because for me crafting is you know supposed to be fun and stress-free and I have there's just some stuff that I haven't mastered yet like I have these watercolor pencils so they look interesting and I feel like they would work out well um, because you might have a little bit more control so we'll see if I break those out um, soon 
So these are the Arteza Real Brush Pens. I also have the Zigs as well. It just depends on what, um, they're really, they work the same for me. These were just closer to me, so that's what I grabbed for. So the colors that I used are uh, Tawny, uh, this is green. I believe I used a light green also. Um, Tawny's like the brown range. And then the other brown that I used was ginger. And then we've got apricot also. And this one's called pale skin and fair skin. And that's what I used for the face. It's like a light peach color. I am really enjoying the sizing on these images. There is a little agenda monkeys and I like when Mama Elephant kind of transforms the little agendas into these larger images too. Uh, you can definitely mix and match them. I really like the sizing. They do it also with the uh, Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber exclusives and I really love uh, working with those stamp sets. So it was super weird because I had originally intended to use Bristle Smooth cardstock, which works perfect every time. And for some reason, I'm not sure what, it just wasn't uh, flowing the way I wanted. I don't know if it had to do with like some of the darker colors that I was using, but usually I can just write with the marker straight on and blend out, but I'm just not sure why it didn't work this time. So that's why I used the watercolor. So we'll take these images that we colored and cut them out with the coordinating dies and look how precious these are. Here are the combo circle dies. It comes in a set and you can cut out six different shapes of the circles with a stitched outline. Also this sort of flower shape here is used to make a scallop edge and you can make your scallops different colors. So you would cut it out twice in two different colors and then you can have a multicolored scallop, which is really cool, and then use the circle to layer on top of it and you can do that in different sizes. I tried to make, um, tried to use three different sizes so you can see what that all looks like. So I decided for these cards to do some ink blending. These are the colors that I'm using. And first we're going to make our larger scallop. This is the largest size. So I want my scallops to be green and also yellow. So I'm going to cut these two out and this first one, I'm going to ink blend just the scallop part in green. I'll cut out the same size and do this one in yellow. And then when you layer them on top of each other, um, it'll be green, yellow, green, yellow, green, and yellow. I really like the way that looks. I'm also cutting out the circle that goes along with that and doing some ink blending there. I'm going to do uh, two other sizes of the scallop so you can see kind of the variation in sizes. And this is sort of like the medium shape. And for this one, I kind of wanted to have a sun look. So I'm doing like a yellow color um, as well as a orange color. So it'll be orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow. And um, I'm doing the middle here. This is the circle that layers on top of the scallop pieces. Um, I'll do that in yellow. And this, I thought it looked like a little sun. So I took the smallest one and did orange and yellow just so I can make a little baby sun and then ink blend the whole circle in the middle in yellow. I'm also ink blending my card panels here. I'm gonna make one green and I'm gonna make one um, this yellow color. Sometimes I like using colored cardstock, but then other times I like doing ink blending to color the cardstock. It just really depends on my mood. And here I thought I would sprinkle some water on top of the Distress Oxide ink to make a sort of distress look. And I really like the way that um, makes some variation in the ink blending. I'm going to stamp out some of the sentiments that come with the stamp set on my scallops. I did the other one directly on the card and I'm just sort of building out my scenes here. I'm layering all my scallops together and all of the circles on top of that. And I'll be making two different cards. 
So the way that I did the scallops with the different colors are you cut out two of the flower sort of shape ones and do them in two different colors. And then I like to put one of the circles that fit with it on top of it so it's three layers. So you would have to cut out the scallop shape twice. I thought the tiniest one was so cute and I really wanted to make a sun out of it. So that's what I did with that one. So now I'm going to build my scenes together for this largest scallop. I'm taking the banana tree, putting that in the middle, and then I'll make a scene around it using a couple of the monkey images. I hadn't ink blended for quite some time and I forgot how nice it looks. I like, I like both using colored cardstock and then also the ink blending too. It just depends, but the ink blending, I think it just is a softer look and you can fade it out as opposed to using colored cardstock, which I also really love using. The colored cardstock gives you kind of like a more solid looking look. <laughs> These sentiments are so cute too. This one is, I am chimply bananas for you. So I wanted to make sure to use the little banana stack. Um, and this is the card where I used my little scallop as the sun. Um, and then I put a little monkey on top of there. I really love it. I really also like the little water splatters too. I rarely do that, um, but I, I love the way it looks. I think I always hesitate because I don't want to mess it up. But at the end of the day, you just have to wait for it to dry and it looks great. I did mount these card panels into card bases to complete the cards. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an awesome day. Stay safe and happy crafting. I will see you guys tomorrow for another video. Bye guys.